Salam and good morning. My name is Fatima Reba Yusuf, and this is Electronics. So today we are going to talk about phase diagrams. But before then, we need to define some terms, especially phase. How can we treat phase diagrams without knowing what a phase is? So a phase is a homogeneous portion of a system that has uniform physical and chemical characteristics. So probably you've known of the states of matter, right? So a simple example that you can use to understand what a phase is, is when you consider water and its three different states of matter. It can be in the solid phase as ice, it can exist in the liquid phase as water, and it can exist in the gaseous state of matter as gas or vapor. So, in this lesson, we're going to have an overview of phase diagrams, and that's why we've started with defining what phase is. Now, in material science, there are many times when, like, the simple example we gave on water, they are a mixture of metals that are sometimes molten and then used to form other compounds or they form a system containing different phases. And this phase is unlike in this case where we just said liquid, gas and solid, we could be having alpha phase, beta phase, alpha plus beta phase and so on and so on. Unlike in this simple case where we just mentioned the liquid vapor and gas phase or vapor phase, in the other case we could have more complicated phases such as alpha phase, beta phase, alpha plus, beta phase and so on and so forth. Now, but how do we understand the phases? A very important method that is used to understand the number of phases present in any system is by the use of phase diagrams which are graphical plots that show the different phases present and represent the physical states of a substance or a system at given conditions and these conditions could be temperature pressure and or concentration of substances or mixtures the reason why i put and slash or is because sometimes you have a phase diagram having the dimensions of temperature and pressure that's pressure on the y-axis and temperature on the x-axis or you have temperature and concentration so when you have just temperature and concentration then you assume that your pressure is kept constant that's why it's excluded from the system so phase diagrams are like maps showing the properties of a given material at a specific at specific conditions and even when you see the diagrams of phase diagrams, of course, we know that they are graphical plots. They will even look like maps and you can follow them to determine the composition of a particular component of the system and other characteristics such as the temperature and the pressure. So this type of phase diagram may indicate the phase boundaries that at the particular point or the particular temperature or at any particular pressure where there is a phase change that's from maybe liquid it changes to gas or from alpha it changes to beta and other cases. It also indicates the critical points and even triple points or the points of equilibrium uh, being deciphered on the phase diagram. And these are all done at stipulated conditions of pressure, temperature, composition, density, and others. So next we are going to talk about the different types of phase diagrams we have. So phase diagrams can exist in unary forms, that's where there's only one component present. And a common example is a phase diagram of water. Water is just one component, it's just that it exists in different phases. That's liquid, vapor, and solid then we also have the binary phase diagram which as the name implies contains two components such as maybe copper and nickel aluminium and tin and so or something like that then there's the ternary phase diagram which contains of about three components that are present meanwhile we're going to show some examples of phase diagrams so we're going to take a look at all of this phase diagram examples we're going to start of course with the unary phase diagram we're going to explore 
an example of a unary phase diagram which is the phase diagram for water as you can see from this phase diagram it is plotted it's a plot of pressure against temperature we have our temperature in the Celsius and our pressure in atmosphere and then we have the lines that are um, serving as the boundary phase phase boundaries then we have the lines that are serving as the phase boundaries that are separating the solid phase from the liquid phase and from the vapor phase now at this point a where the three lines intersect is the triple point where there's equilibrium and there's a coexistence of all three phases but before we move further to the binary phase diagram, I want us to take a look at another example of a unary phase diagram. Now take a look at this. It's a phase diagram for carbon dioxide. And tell me whether you have spotted a difference. Is there a difference between the phase diagram for carbon dioxide and the phase diagram for water? Perhaps at first glance it might look as if there is no difference, but just look at it very well. Look at the line coming separating the solid phase from the liquid phase in the phase diagram for water and look at the one in the phase diagram for carbon dioxide. Do you see it now? Right. So in the phase diagram for water, the slope of the line separating the solid and the liquid regions is negative it's coming downwards while for the phase diagram for carbon dioxide it's going upwards even though the slope is not too large but it's still increasing progressively and why is that actually the reason for that is because of the anomalous expansion of water where instead of water to be expanding as it's as it cools down from the ice stage to the water stage in between zero degrees Celsius and four degrees Celsius it actually contracts and from the water phase to the ice phase instead of it to contract as it's normal for other substances it actually expands and due to that there's an anomaly and that causes the line to be as it is in this diagram as for carbon dioxide and other systems or other substances their phase diagram will typically look like this so we're going to explain a bit of the points and areas of a typical unary phase diagram as you can see it's simply a plot of pressure against temperature as you can see this is just a generic plot of a unary phase diagram and it actually looks more like the phase diagram for carbon dioxide instead of the phase diagram for water and I've explained the reason why earlier so in between from the solid stage to the liquid stage melting occurs as you can see from in this di direction that is as you increase your temperature the solid melts to liquid or conversely if you decrease your pressure your solid turns to liquid and it's the other way around from liquid if you decrease your temperature it will freeze or if you increase your pressure it will freeze while between the solid and the gaseous phase there is sublimation when you are progressing from solid to gas and there's the position as you are progressing from gas to solid likewise from liquid to gas there's vaporization as you increase your temperature in the right direction or you uh, and there's condensation as you let the gas cool down or you reduce the temperature in the left direction so next we're going to take a look at the binary phase diagram now as i mentioned earlier binary here implies that there are two components or like the previous phase diagrams of the unary phase diagram 
or like the previously mentioned unary phase diagrams where there's just one component it's either it's water or carbon dioxide or something like that in this case we have two components there could be two metals two solids or two substances that were mixed together and due to the differences in temperature we are inclined to keep our pressure constant which is why you won't see pressure in this graph instead you see the weight percentage or the composition or the concentration on the x-axis now here actually it's either you have your a hundred percent a on the left hand side meaning your a will be decreasing as you move, move progressively here while your b increases in any case you should know that they are actually moving in the opposite directions while at the center they will have the same percentage by weight meanwhile for example if you have 100 percent a it will continue decreasing until it reaches zero at this point where we'll have 100 percent b while our b will then be increasing from the left hand side to the right hand side where it will reach its 100 percent now the law that we use to calculate or to perform calculations on binary phase diagrams is typically the gibbs phase rule and we'll explore it in one of our subsequent videos next is the ternary phase diagram now as the name implies it contains three components in the system and interestingly even the phase diagram has three sides technically that's why it's even in a triangular shape as you can see these sides of the triangle represent the a coordinate system with the edges as the axis and it's used to plot three dependent variables that always add up to a fixed value now we have three components here as you can see we have magnesium oxide we have aluminium oxide and we have silicon oxide unlike the binary and the unary phase diagrams which contain two and one components respectively so of course this is more complicated and it gets more complicated as the number of components increase meanwhile in subsequent videos we are going to take a look at some calculations on the Gibbs phase rule and also the lever rule where we'll solve some examples and we'll be good to go you can make further research on this topic and increase your understanding on it so thank you and see you in the next video